The Tesla Semi was first unveiled back in 2017, then nearly five years later in 2022, limited production of the truck finally began. However, despite Elon estimating in Tesla's Q3 2022 investors conference call that Tesla was aiming for 50,000 units in 2024, only a small number of Tesla Semis are currently being built per month on a low volume production line in Nevada. So the question is, when will the Tesla Semi actually go into higher volume production? Follow along with me as I answer that question and discuss the latest Tesla Semi updates. I'm John and this is CleanerWatt. During Tesla's Q1 2024 investors conference call, Lars Moravi gave the following Tesla Semi update. So we're finalizing the engineering of Semi to enable a super cost-effective, high volume production with our learnings from our fleet and our pilot fleet and Pepsi fleet, which are expanding this year marginally. For some of you watching this video, it might actually really surprise you that Lars Moravi would actually say that they're still finalizing the engineering of the Tesla Semi because of course, the truck is in production right now. And usually you finalize engineering of a vehicle before you start producing it and selling that to customers. However, a commercial vehicle like a Tesla Semi really takes a whole different level of testing to make sure that engineering is right before you really mass produce the vehicle. So while Tesla has been producing the Semi for over one and a half years now, the vehicle still could be considered a beta prototype, not a rough beta prototype, but it's still really in progress. And the actual high volume production Tesla Semi will likely have some differences based on what they are shipping now with their low volume setup. I believe Tesla is really wise here to take their time with this and make sure that it's completely right before they really mass produce these and put them in a space that really requires very little downtime with a truck. With a semi truck, it really has to be very reliable and you really have to make sure that everything is right. So using learnings from their fleet of trucks and PepsiCo's fleet of trucks is of course really valuable for this process of finalizing the engineering of the truck. During the conference call, Lars Moravi also mentioned, quote, in parallel, as we showed in the shareholders deck, we have started construction on the factory in Reno. Our first vehicles are planned for late 2025 with external customers starting in 2026. When Lars Moravi mentioned start of production, he was referring to the Tesla semi factory that Tesla is building at the Gigafactory Nevada site. Originally Tesla's plan, it looked like Tesla's plan was for the Tesla semi factory to be a section of the building connected to the existing building. However, based on the image that Tesla shared in the shareholders deck, you can see they're actually building this particular facility separate from the other building. I don't know if this new separate building will also house 4680 battery production because the initial plan was for the expansion of their Gigafactory to include 4680 battery production and Tesla semi production. I don't know if both processes are going to happen in this separate factory or not, but I kind of believe that Tesla is going to keep Tesla semi production separate and the 4680 expansion will actually happen connected to the existing building that's already there right now. I could be wrong on that, but that seems to make a lot more sense to me. Now, in addition to Lars Moravi's updates during the investors conference call, Dan Priestley, who is senior manager of semi truck engineering at Tesla, recently shared some semi updates at an ACT Expo event as detailed in this article. I did find it funny that Dan acknowledged Tesla's tendency to be late with product launches when he said, quote, Now I know as alluded to, there's been some questions on timing, but Tesla has a specialty and that is turning the impossible into merely late, joked Priestley. I believe one of the reasons why Tesla is often late is because Elon Musk is constantly pushing the team to innovate. And that often involves new processes, new technologies, developing those out and really achieving what many would call impossible or at the very least, very difficult to achieve. So often Tesla will be late, but Elon Musk really pushes innovation. And when they achieve those goals, while it might be late, it makes for a better product in the end. Now on that note, there have been some naysayers that really doubt that a battery electric semi truck is practical. And despite what these uninformed people like to claim, a well-designed battery electric semi truck like the Tesla semi is actually practical and I believe the PepsiCo fleet proves that out and it appears like the Tesla semi can still carry a comparable payload to a diesel semi truck and has a much lower cost of operation than a diesel semi truck. 
On that topic, Dan Priestley did acknowledge how difficult it is to build the Tesla Semi. And in this article, it was written, quote, I think that there are some narratives that seem to think that electric heavy trucking is impossible. You might hear some say that it's really hard. Well, guess what? It is really hard. We've been doing it, but it is absolutely worth doing. And we do not enter this industry lightly. One of the aspects that make building a battery electric semi truck so difficult is you have to keep the weight down so you don't have a big payload difference between what an electric semi truck can carry versus a diesel semi truck. And in order to do that, you have to really build the truck from the ground up and make sure that the powertrain is really efficient so you don't have to have a crazy large battery pack, but you still have a good amount of range. On that topic in this article, it was written, quote, alluding to the need for freight companies to maximize payload when transporting goods, Priestley explained that achieving strong range to mass ratios is only possible with a dedicated purpose-built ground up electric platform, something the electric vehicle manufacturer has past experience with. There's no wasted space. The powertrain and the vehicle work hand in hand. We saw this on the light duty side and we're seeing it all over again on the heavy duty side, said Priestley. Tesla is also putting our money where our mouth is, introducing the semi into its own supply chain and operations by hauling battery packs from its gigafactory in Nevada down to support its Fremont factory operations in California. Of course, fully loaded, the Tesla semi should be able to get around 500 miles of range. Once again, that's not empty, that's fully loaded. That's very impressive. And Tesla has demonstrated that that's actually the case with a test drive. Beyond that, Dan Priestley confirmed, quote, the vehicle mass allows for one for one payload parity. That means there's not a big penalty versus a diesel semi truck when it comes to your payload. That confirmation there by Dan is really key because that's something that critics really point to when it comes to battery electric semi trucks, that you have a big penalty when it comes to the payload that you can carry and that being a problem. But it looks like there is a one for one payload parity with the Tesla semi versus a diesel semi truck. That's a really good confirmation there by Dan. And then lastly, once again, Dan mentioned a lower operating cost, which is of course a big reason to operate an electric semi truck versus a diesel burning semi truck. Of course, a Tesla semi is extremely efficient, especially as compared to the competition. And in this article, Dan Priestley did once again confirm the average of 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile for the Tesla Semi. And this is also something that a manager at PepsiCo confirmed in a NACFE video that I mentioned in the previous video, that same 1.7 kilowatt hour per mile efficiency number. And in this particular case, the uh, PepsiCo manager mentioned being able to stay below that number. And when you compare that efficiency and the estimated battery size of the Tesla Semi to some of the battery electric semi competition, you can see that it really is the most efficient truck on this list. Another proof that the Tesla semi truck is actually a practical commercial vehicle is the fact that according to this article, PepsiCo is apparently taking delivery of 50 more Tesla semis at its Fresno, California location. So obviously it wouldn't make sense for PepsiCo to add more Tesla semis to their fleet if they weren't working out well for them. I believe this indicates they are working well and that they have a lower cost of operation than the rest of their fleet. And of course, there's also the benefit of them lowering the amount of pollution they're putting out. And it really looks better as a company to have a greener company in that way. But I believe there are also cost savings associated with this. And I believe the drivers actually prefer to drive the Tesla Semi because it's such a nice vehicle to drive based on past examples of PepsiCo drivers talking about the Tesla Semi. I did cover that in the past. Now, one other note of practicality that I want to mention is that the Tesla Semi can operate in hot temperatures and cold temperatures. And this is something that Tesla is making sure that is the case. And in this article, this was actually addressed. And apparently Tesla has tested the Semi truck in Alaska in temperatures that were minus 35 degrees Fahrenheit and in the Las Vegas and Death Valley area with temperatures between 115 and 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So in the end, Tesla is taking their time to make sure that the semi truck is ready for prime time. And in less than two years, the truck should finally be in volume production. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.